Hello everybody and welcome to This Week in Astrology with your friend Gretchen Heidel, full-time astrologer, life coach, Reiki master, and so much more. I'm here tonight live on March 11th, 2024, and I'm going over This Week in Astrology between March 11th all the way through until March 17th, which St. Patrick's Day if you celebrate. So welcome, welcome if you're just joining me live here tonight on Facebook. I'm live every Monday night, 8 p.m. Eastern time on Facebook, my astrology updates by face uh, by Gretchen Heidel Facebook page. And I also co-record, I have another camera going to post the replay on YouTube. So welcome, welcome if you're just joining. If you haven't subscribed yet to my YouTube channel, please do so. And also please like my Facebook page as well. And that way you will get notices every time I go either live or I'm posting a video. So I mean, go ahead and post below your astrological sign. Where are you tuning in from? I love to hear uh, where everybody's tuning in from. We've been having uh, you know, more and more of a wider audience, which is pretty cool. Um, hey, no, you're my first one again. Hola, welcome. Emily, hey, watching from Florida. Welcome, Sagittarius, Cancer, and Scorpio. Um, we had last week a very busy week last week, astrologically speaking. Oh my goodness, there was so much that was going on. I had a lot of 911 calls last week. So I don't know how did everybody do last week. You know, I like to start the broadcast just while people are joining um, and, and just kind of touching on what happened. We had Chiron conjunct the North Node of the Moon. Um, and that was a big thing last Tuesday was the peak of it. And now we're kind of on the downside of that, but that's still very much in the background all this week as well. So Chiron conjunct the North Node of the Moon means we're supposed to be healing something so that we can move on with our lives and can and connect with our destiny. And we had Mars conjunct Chiron. There was a lot of energy with Mars, with Chiron. Mars uh, formed a conjunction with Chiron last Wednesday on March 6th. And then also squared Uranus on Saturday, March 9th. And then also the sun formed a sextile with Uranus. So there was a lot of astrological energy last week involving Mars and Chiron and Uranus. And oh my goodness, all these planets were kind of acting up a little bit. They were they were kind of aggressive. Now, uh, we did just have this big new moon yesterday in Pisces. Um, the peak of it, the height of it, the pinnacle of it was yesterday. March 10th, we are probably still feeling some of the reverberations from that. It was a super new moon, meaning that it was the closest here to the planet. Um, and that was in Pisces. 5 a.m. Eastern time was the peak of it. That was yesterday. Uh, anybody else have any experiences with the new moon yesterday? Um, anything you'd like to share? Big new moon. So what did you manifest? Did you write out your new moon manifestation list? Look, I mean, you know, we're a little bit past the 24 hour bubble, but you know, you could technically write it tonight if you had forgotten. Uh, so go ahead and make sure that you do that because we want to manifest our hopes, our dreams, our desires. Okay, this is the time to welcome something into our lives. We're now between the cycle between the last new moon and the next full moon, which is going to be coming on March 25th, and that's going to be in Libra. So there's a, like a lot of astrological energies going on uh, behind the scenes, and a lot of it is taking place. And we're going to be we're going to be welcoming things into our lives between the new moon and full moon. That's the time to bring things in. And then and then the full moon is the time to release something, let something go, conclude something, and wrap something up. Okay, so if you think about this, this is the time to get on it to wrap your to do your new moon manifestation list and all that good stuff. Hey, Kelly, welcome, welcome. Pisces moon. Yes, you had a Pisces moon. I have a Pisces moon too. I really felt this astrologically. Big downloads from this weekend. Now, Pisces moon is all about feelings and emotions and all that stuff. So it might have been a little bit of an emotional weekend. I mean, that sometimes happens too. Um, now, I'm going to just uh, dive into the week. I don't know why, but it looks like algorithm is slow tonight um, on Facebook. I'm not really sure what's going on. <laughs> Oh no, Wendy said Pisces and you have a leak in your bathroom ceiling. Yeah, Pisces is related to water, to leakage, to to all kinds of things like that. So yeah, that can be that can be something. Hey Rita, Virgo in Colorado. Now I was talking about Virgos might have experienced that that new moon almost as if it was a full moon. So uh Virgos might have felt a little bit more intense because Virgo and Pisces are opposite of each other. So if you have Virgo in your chart, that could have mm, stirred something up for you. 
Um, so I'm going to uh, just dive in. It is Monday night, uh, March 11th, and I'm going to just dive in with what's going on today because today and next Sunday, actually, are the big astrological energies that that uh, are of the week. This week, astrologically speaking, is kind of light. I say light in air quotes. <laughs> Um, you just received the update from Facebook, Kelly said. Oh my goodness. I don't know why Facebook has been slow on the uptake there. It's I had said last week was going to be almost similar to a Mercury retrograde. And that was when Facebook and Instagram went down, like completely down. <laughs> they should have just listened to my broadcast. <laughs> But yeah, we had a, there was a lot of technical glitches and things and we are moving into, okay, when Mercury is going to turn retrograde eventually uh, on April 1st. So we're, we're almost at the shadow period, almost, we're about a week away, but boy, it has almost felt, it has almost felt a little Mercury retrograde ish. That's because of all the Mercury and the Uranus stuff that's been going on in the background because those two alone can produce those feelings. Uh, Uranus can be also glitchy. Uh, especially with electrical things. Big news is actually happening today, uh, Monday on March 11th. We had Venus all well, this evening, I guess. Venus is going into Pisces. That happened today at 5.50 p.m. Eastern time. Venus is in Pisces now. Now for this last month, since, since last month, uh, Venus has been in, uh, in Aquarius for a whole month. Um, and that was, let's see, that was back on... Uh, where is it? Oh, it was back on um, April, uh, February 16th. So for almost a full month, it's been in Aquarius. Um, and that was friendships and social and kind of, you know, but it, it's not, Venus in Aquarius is not like known for being one of the super most romantic um, astrological Venus signs. Um, it's more platonic friendships and friends can become lovers and lovers can become friends, kind of like that Dave Matthews song during that time. But it's more about like kind of socializing, coming together for a joint cause or some kind of thing. And, and of course, the love of humanity, you know, um, and that's Venus and Aquarius. Now we're coming out of that. It's a little bit more, I'll say Venus and Aquarius is a little bit more objective okay uh it's not so like close and personal it has a little bit more objectivity so so now we have venus moving into pisces which is a whole different ball game uh this wants to not just not be objective this doesn't want to be have have objectivity at all it venus in uh Pisces wants to meld, wants to become one with another, wants to um, integrate. Uh, it's kind of like mind, body, and spirit. Uh, we want to kind of integrate with another. I, if anybody on the program, if you know, if you have Venus and Pisces, raise your hand. Um, uh, you know, but it would, I'd love to hear from you, but this wants to be totally subjective. This wants to be completely one-on-one, -on -one, completely, you know, like I said, melding with another, having that very, very close, uh, personalized connection. That's Venus and Pisces. Now we're going to be doing this for the next month. And every single month we go through a new Venus sign. And this is the new flavor. And when I'm talking about this, there's two perspectives. Remember, there's your perspective of where is Venus in your astrological chart. And then there's the global perspective where everybody's going to be Venus in Pisces for just having that as a background or a flavoring of what's going on in our love lives. So this is for sure. If you are single and wanting to mingle, this is a very, very romantic, very idealized, very um, fairy tales and romance uh, novel type things. I mean, Venus and Pisces is all about all that stuff. It's the accoutrements, you know, it's like, it's like candles and soft music and, and beautiful art and beautiful poetry and writing a song and a sonnet and a poem. This is very creative, um, creativity in love, potentially. Um, you know, this is the time when someone could really woo you and, and kind of have all that. But here's the thing. There is a there is always every sign has a has a positive and a shadow side. And the shadow side of Venus and Pisces is because of the lack of objectivity. There is no objectivity now. We're in it. We're so in it that we can't see when there's a big giant honking red flag. Um, 
I saw a really funny meme one time. I don't remember if it was Facebook or Instagram or whatever. Um, by the way, if you guys can, anybody on Instagram, can you guys like my posts and kind of like zhuzh it up a little bit? I don't know why I'm not getting like any interaction hardly at all on Instagram and I'm not really sure why. Um, I've heard it's just like a little bit of a tougher platform, but oh my goodness, it's, it's, <laughs> I've been trying and I'm not sure what else to do there. So, but I saw this funny meme on Instagram or Facebook that said it was like a picture of all these red flags. And it said, I don't know what country this is, but I've dated many people from there. <laughs> and I thought that was really funny. <laughs> so it's something that, um, that, you know, with Venus and Pisces, Venus and Pisces is really just, I mean, you want to idealize somebody you want to have rose colored glasses on, you know, you're seeing the cup is half full, you know, oh, they went to jail, but it was just because they wanted to have some kind of, you know, experience or something. You know, it's like, it's like reasoning away, rationing away, red flags. It's a type of love that's a bit sacrificial. Um, I know that sounds kind of yucky, but it can be sometimes where, where it's like you give to another so much you know, the idea or the concept of unconditional love, we, I love that concept. I have Pisces moon. I love that concept. But it is conditional. Adult love is conditional. Unconditional love is like that you get a love from a parent. That's unconditional love. And, and that's even in theory, right? <laughs> you know, I mean, how much of us really got unconditional love from our parents? Probably not many. Um, but, 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 with a with an adult love and a, an adult partner, we're out of that unconditional love time. You cheat on somebody, well, that's going to be conditional, right? You know, I mean, that's, that's the, you know, or you do something bad, uh, you know, or somebody else doesn't, that's conditional, right? So having boundaries is a big, huge, important thing to remember to have when Venus is in Pisces, because Pisces doesn't have, Pisces life lesson is, is a having boundaries because Pisces naturally kind of doesn't have boundaries. You know, if you think of water, right? We were just talking about leaking sinks, right? If you think about water, okay, uh, water doesn't, it would go everywhere if it didn't have a container, right? If you think about the ocean, it didn't, if it didn't have that container, it would just be like, you know, and the whole world, we would be, all of us would be underwater. So having the container is healthy boundaries. And so it's very hard to do when we're in Venus and Pisces because we're so idealistic, we're so romantic, we want to believe in the fairy tale, we want to believe in the ha happily ever after, we want all that stuff. And this is the last astrological sign in the zodiac, right? So we're kind of finishing up something, we're wrapping up something in our love lives right now. <laughs> Wendy said, but what if a wave is in front of you? <laughs> That's funny, you dive right in, right? <laughs> um, Sarah, hey, welcome, uh, Leo from Vermont. Yes, your bones are healing nicely. That's great. That's great news. Congratulations, Sarah had broken her foot. Uh, speaking of feet, that is Pisces. Pisces is, rules over the feet area. Uh, Tina, yes, welcome, Cancer Sun. I love that. Um, so, you know, getting back to this Venus and Pisces. So, this is a very lovely time. If you, you know, so if you're single, we do have a brief bubble before Mercury goes retrograde. If you are single, this is definitely time to lean in and to, oh my gosh, you know, connect with, oh, you know, all the stuff before Mercury goes retrograde. But, but we have to be mindful of us ourselves that we're not telling ourselves a fairy tale. We're not telling ourselves a story. And you don't have to sacrifice. If somebody else isn't like carrying their weight and somebody else is maybe tr not treating you right or doing something, you don't have to like do this. You don't have to do this. No, you know, and, and so we have to remember that to have those good, healthy boundaries when Venus is in Pisces, because Venus tends to get real lost because we want to believe in the fairy tale. Now, if you are already an existing couple, if you're married, this is the time to reconnect. And, you know, there was an article one time I read on Psychology Today that said that all love, you know, romantic love, you know, you kind of have to tell yourself a little bit of, not a lie, but a little bit of remembering what made you fall in love with that person and kind of retaining it 
even after you see them have the flu or, <laughs> you know, have problems where, you know, you know, whatever they're the ugly side of them, maybe they got fired from their job or maybe they left their socks on the floor or whatever thing it is, right? You, you, you know, after a while, when you're with somebody, ugh, all the rose colored glasses, they come off and it's like, Ooh, look at the reality of this. Okay. Do I still love this person? And can I still be in love with this person? Well, connecting with that thing, that story, the romantic can actually, if you flip the coin a little bit, that can actually help you to retain some love and to remember the good times and to remember, oh my gosh, my spouse, you know, <laughs> maybe they maybe they gained a little extra pounds or they lost a little bit of their hair or whatever thing it is, okay? But, oh, they still look good to me or they still, you know, they still treat me like they're the, my, you know, I'm their, their number one. And that's, that is something that's very important. And that could be where this Pisces, Venus and Pisces storytelling and fantasy telling can actually work in our favor where, because they say in psychology that actually retaining a little bit of that can be healthy for a relationship. It's just that when we're like, la, 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 when there's big, giant, glaring red flags, uh, maybe, maybe it's even worse than that. Maybe it's straight up abuse or straight up, you know, neglect or something then we then that can hurt us in that aspect. So see, there's always pluses and minuses to every single sign astrologically, you know, and that is just kind of the shadow side of of the Venus and Pisces sort of cycle. But this can be very good if you're looking for some kind of story or romance or serendipity. Oh my gosh, it's just so amazing. I went to the store and they were there and I was thinking of them and you know, all that stuff is fun. It's really fun. And uh, I'm not being a cynic here, but but I'm just saying as a warning that we can kind of get, because if you think about who is the ruler of Pisces, it's Neptune, right? And Neptune is lies, illusions, delusions, <laughs> confusion. Okay. So that's the basis of our love right now. It can be a little, it's fun. And oh, we could get caught up in this beautiful bubble of just funness and sensuality and all that stuff. I mean, that's very Pisces is all that sensuality, but, but getting lost in that, oh, it's delicious and lovely, but are we seeing the reality of it? Are we seeing the, now the next Venus cycle that we'll be in is next month. And that's going to be April 5th, um, April 5th, 2024, Venus will be in Pisces all this time. So from today until April 5th, then it's going to switch into Aries. So we're going to be in a brand new Venus cycle and that's all about the conquest. And it's, it's much more Mars, right? It's, it's, it's Mars, uh, oriented Venus. So that's a whole different Venus. That's more passion than it is this, all this romance, but Hey, we got to have some passion. We got to have some romance before we have the passion. Um, you know, it's, it is what it is. Uh, Noel said, yeah, it can be skewed a little bit. Hey, Katrina, welcome from Maine. I love that Sagittarius. Ashley and another Sagittarius. We got all the Sagittarius is jumping in. So that is going to be the Venus uh, cycle that we're in now. We're in Pisces season still. Um, you know, we can't forget that. We just had that new moon in Pisces and now we have Venus moving into Pisces. So, so we're in Pisces season and we're still going over all that stuff. So, um, you know, our love life is going to take a little you know, maybe get a little zhuzhing up, but it could also fall into that area of lies, illusions, confusion too. So we got to watch that. You know, like I said, there's always a positive and a negative. Now, if love life is not your thing and you're like, nah, I don't really, I don't really, um, you know, that's not a big thing for me right now. I'm not focused on that. Well, it's also Venus's finances and also creativity. So Venus and Pisces is a very, very, very creative. You know, if you think of Michelangelo, he was he was a double Pisces, Pisces sun and Pisces moon. Maurice Ravel, the great composer, okay, Pisces sun. Um, you know, the, there is a lot of people that are very, very famous that have Pisces in their chart. Rihanna, okay, to... to um, talk about somebody that, you know, we know nowadays, um, it, you know, as far as being Pisces goes. So, you know, I mean, it, it is a very creative time. So Venus and Pisces, remember Venus is the goddess of love and beauty as she was Aphrodite in Greek mythology. So for sure, that can be a good thing, a boost, especially if you're a creative person and also financial. Interestingly enough, you know, I, I talked uh, before... I see, I see really two Pisces. It's very interesting. I get Pisces that come to me that are like 
on it with the numbers. They're very financial. They're very like, and even they say that Neptune rules over the stock market actually, because what is the stock market? Nobody knows. It's some nebulous thing and it goes up and down and nobody really understands it. <laughs> you know, it's, it's very Neptunian, you know, it rises and it falls. Somebody sneezes and it, and it tanks and then somebody giggles and it goes up again. Nobody really knows, you know, and that's very Neptunian, you know, plus it's, it's ebbs and flows, right? Um, so if you think of finances, this could be good for finances, but then I always, then every once in a while I'll see a Pisces who has no, no idea about their finances. Like they are broke. It's like, where did my money go? You know, three days ago, my bank account had a good amount of money in it. Now it doesn't, you know, and that can be the shadow side of Pisces. So it's interesting. I see either like an all or nothing with Pisces and numbers, um, and money, um, it's either all <laughs> or it's or it's the lack of um, and this misunderstanding. And th those people tend to be Pisces that are a little bit more in the Neptunian kind of way, you know, Meh, I don't know. I haven't worked since last year. You know, I don't know where my money went, you know, and, and there's that aspect, just a floating, drifting kind of energy with money. Or there's those Pisces that are like Albert Einstein, another famous Pisces who are the numbers, you know, like it's like numbers really speak to them. I know a lot of Pisces that are really into numerology. I mean, Pisces in general tend to be a lot into this stuff, like like astrology, numerology, tarot, all of that. Um, so, <laughs> so it's something that that um, yeah, it, it's really uh, a powerful thing. So we have, like I said, all from from today going into April fifth. 2024, we have Venus and Pisces. That's something to enjoy, something to lean into. We could have really a lot of fun with it. Where it's going to get really confusing is that last week of Venus and Pisces is when Mercury retrograde enters the picture because that's going to be on April 1st and Venus is going to be in Pisces until April 5th. So if you think about that week, that five day bubble where they're kind of overlapping, that's going to be confusion on confusion because Mercury retrograde tends to confuse things. Venus and Pisces can be a little prone to that, um, especially in our love lives. So that can be something that uh, we got to just watch. It's like a kind of cautionary tale. That's definitely the time to pause the dating apps. Okay. So if you are on a dating app uh, and you're out looking single and looking, nah, just, just, just put that on pause. Okay. Um, enjoy it while it's here for the three weeks while we're, while we're in Venus and Pisces, but then that's it. I would put a pause on it because it gets too confusing. The X's come back. Oh, here we go. We got one person, Wendy Martin. There you go. Venus and Pisces. Yep. Uh, you know, is any of that resonating with you, uh, Wendy? <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> Uh, you have so much inventory. Oh, good. That's good, Wendy. You have so much inventory. Um, you love embracing the creative side. That's wonderful. Yeah, exactly. Kelly said, uh-oh, my daughter is very Neptunian Pisces. Yes, exactly. <laughs> Kristen, hello, Sagittarius in Vermont. We have a lot of Sagittarius on tonight. Um, so if you have, where's your Venus sign? Do you know where your Venus sign is? If you have Venus in Pisces, this is going to be your Venus return, which is wonderful, Wendy. That's going to be Venus on Venus. That's a lovely return to have. Now, a lot of people don't know what a return is. I'm going to just very briefly say a solar return is something that we celebrate every year, sun on sun. It's called birthday. Happy birthday. That's your solar return. But then there's a lot of other um, uh, types of returns, Mercury return, Venus return, Mars return, Saturn return, which is a more famous one. Uh, and it just simply means that the planet returns to the space it was at the time you were born. So if you have Venus and Pisces during this time, you will have your Venus return, which is Venus on Venus. And that's a great return to have. That's a really like Saturn return, not so much, but that's a great return to have. Um, uh, Kelly Venus in cancer 12th house. Yeah. So your Venus is behind the scenes. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> no projects except for loving yourself. I love that Wendy. <laughs> um, all mirror. Yes. You're, oh, that's cool. Um, <laughs> okay. So, so if you have Venus in another water sign, so if you're Venus in Scorpio, if you are Venus in cancer, you will feel Okay, the Venus will form a trine with you during that time, and that could be mm, 
that could be nice. That could be, that could, you know, stir up some, some flirts and some whatever. Um, even if you're not in the market, you could still have a little flirtation or a little something, um, or with your spouse. Um, now, if you have Venus in any of the mutable signs, so Venus in Virgo, Venus in Pisces, uh, Venus in Gemini, Venus in, in Sagittarius, uh, that could stir up some stuff for you, especially the Venus in Virgo, because that's an opposition uh, and you'll have your Venus opposition. But here's the thing. Venus mostly is good in a chart. I mean, every once in a while you'll see her get a little vengeance or a little something, but but usually, and that's usually when she interacts, Venus interacts with Pluto, uh, but usually Venus uh, placements and Venus transits are really positive for us monetarily. Hey, who, who doesn't want love, money, and creativity, right? I mean, that's all good stuff right there. So, so even when she forms an opposition, that can still stir up something that might be a little, mm, but then, you know, you could still work through it and it'll still be something in your, probably your love life. Uh, Venus and Leo, there you go. Um, so if you have any of those signs, yay, Rosalie, first, first stars of the night. Thank you so much, Rosalie, 50 stars. If you wanna give stars to the broadcast, um, and by the way, you don't have to do it during this broadcast. You can also do it on my post, my daily post, but it's like a, a little way of you know giving a tip or whatever, and it's, it's lovely. Thank you so much, Rosalie, lots of blessings to you. So that is the big news of the week is this Venus and Pisces stuff. Um, and like I said, it, it'll affect us for a month just the only caution to this is for sure um, when we get to Mercury retrograde time on April 1st, that's when we really want to slow this down and go, okay, hold on. <laughs> uh, you know, we got to put a pause on this because this could be, you know, a little bit, um, uh, you know, confusing. Oh no, Wendy said money is flowing out. Ah, that's, that's yucky. Sorry about that. Um, all right. So the other thing that's, I guess kind of what I would call small, but yet big, because this week, like I said, astrologically, which by the way, I just want to let everybody know, I'm going to have a little bit more time tonight to talk, to take questions at the end. So have your question in mind and ready to fire off to me. Okay. At the end of the broadcast, um, because I'm going to move through some of these quickly. Okay. So there's two big series transits this week. Series, just to remind you, is called the, uh, her nickname is the Great Mother, okay? And she is a planetoid, and uh, she's a mini planet, sort of similar to Pluto, okay? And so with having Ceres in Capricorn right now, uh, she's getting some interaction here. And on Wednesday, and I say Wednesday, it's really gonna be overnight, Tuesday into Wednesday, uh, Ceres is going to form a positive sextile with Saturn in Pisces. So, so Ceres is in Capricorn, Saturn's in Pisces. That's a sextile. Those two like each other. And so it's kind of funny because the nickname for Ceres is the Great Mother. And the nickname for Saturn is Big Daddy Saturn. So that's like mom and dad. <laughs> okay. And they're actually getting along. Yay. That's a good thing. Uh, Ceres in Capricorn is much more business oriented where Pisces Saturn is a little... Uh, less Saturn than than a normal Saturn, um, but still is structure. You know, if you think about structure and uh, stability and nurturing and caretaking, this is all Ceres and Saturn stuff. So that's going to come to a peak on Wednesday, March 13th. It's going to be 12.55 a.m. Eastern time. So again, if you're on the West Coast, it's going to be 9.55 p.m. on Tuesday night, the 12th. Um, and so that's the peak of it, but we're feeling this this whole week because anytime Saturn interacts with anything, it's usually like a longer deal. Uh, Saturn lasts for a little while, unless if it's the moon. So, so Ceres forming a sextile with Saturn is all about getting our nurturing on, getting our caretaking on, but doing it in that Saturn Capricorn kind of way, which is more structured. So in other words, Somebody that we love or care about um, could need a little extra nurturing or caretaking, whether that be a child, whether that be an older relative. Uh, we might want to be able to, um, you know, kind of, uh, you know, have those two kind of interact, the series and the, and the, and the Saturn, uh, where we might want to end up 
taking responsibility for those people or monetarily financially responsible or literally just doing duties for them. I'll go to the pharmacy, help you pick up your medication, or I'll take you to the doctor or whatever nurturing and caretaking that we're doing in a more structured kind of Saturn way. That's what's going on on Wednesday. Now, this can also be nurturing our goals because if you think about Saturn Saturn is our goals our it's our it's our spiritual work and it's our literal work while we're here in the planet so if you think about uh you know series which is nurturing and caretaking we can nurture our goals and we can nurture our work a little bit so this could improve our personal lives our financial lives and even our familial lives okay um as far as <laughs> as far as you know uh, having to care for like a child or an older person or just a sick spouse or partner or whatever thing it might be. We're here to nurture and caretake. And actually we're going to do it with the, uh, with like, not like, oh, this is such a burden, like, like doing it because I love you. And this is going to be a good thing, even though it sucks that you're sick or whatever it is, um, that we're going to be nurturing and caretaking, uh, you know, pe those loved ones in our lives. Now, if you don't have any of that, this is to remind yourself to nurture yourself, to have some self-care in a structured way. So if you think about self-care in a structured way, that's a new healthy habit, right? So maybe maybe every day you wanted to start writing in a journal, or maybe every day you wanted to make sure you get eight glasses of water in, or maybe every day, you know, you want to do, you know, some kind of exercise program or, or to eat a salad or whatever thing it is, right? Okay, so this is doing our nurturing of ourselves, self-care in a structured way. So so yeah, this could be really good and positive for starting a healthy habit. Again, the peak of it is on Wednesday, but we're feeling it right now because it's absolutely active right now. Um, and it's going to be going on through the whole week. And then even as we get into Saturday, uh, March 16th, Mercury, and Mercury is now in Aries, is going to form a square with Ceres and Capricorn. So just where we were like, oh, yay, we're having, we're making headway and I'm, and a, I'm getting a healthy habit or I'm going to, I'm going to help somebody else in a health, I'm going to every Monday, I'm going to take, you know, go to the nursing home, visit my granny, you know, whatever structured kind of way, a habitual kind of habit way, it's all of a sudden we're talking about this stuff and there's a little glitch in communication because Mercury is squaring Ceres. So just where I wanted to nurture you and caretake for you and love you, Ceres, uh, Mercury is like, shh, <laughs> you know, stop talking or stop saying that. I don't need your help. What are you doing? You know, you don't have to, you don't have to, you know, come, come by to my house every day. That's annoying, you know? And so Mercury is a glitch in communication. Now, remember, we can heal through our words. And sometimes the thing we always forget the most is part of communication is zipping this and listening. Remember, there's that old saying, you're born with two ears and only one mouth, you know, and that we should be listening more. Sometimes, sometimes the way to nurture somebody, heal somebody, help somebody is just to listen. You know, I mean, how many, t how many times in the last, even let's say in the last year, um, you know, has somebody said, I don't want to talk at all. I want to hear all about you, boo. You know, I just want to hear, you can talk about yourself as long as you want. I mean, hardly ever, never, <laughs> maybe even, you know? And so listening to somebody, holding space for somebody, if they're complaining, if they're struggling, if they're having a problem, if they're sick, if they're, you know, whatever, having issues, sometimes we could just zip it and just listen to them, hold the space for them. And then I think we can get, um, not be in as hot of water. So that is coming on Saturday, the peak of it, the height of it, the pinnacle of it, the maximum, okay, is Saturday. And that's on um, March 16th at 7.08 p.m. Eastern time. Again, earlier than that, what is that? 4, 4.08 um, uh, Pacific time. And so that's what's kind of happening. So we're making headway on, on Wednesday, you know, Tuesday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, even, but then we get into this square on Saturday with series. We mean well, 
you know, with series, I think we mean well, like I want, I'm going to help you. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But then, but then there's like a crunch, you know, they, the, when we come into uh, Mercury and Aries and Mercury and Aries is bossy. So maybe we're bossing somebody around, or maybe someone's bossing us around. They mean well, we got to remember that. <laughs> oh no. Uh, Kelly said your nephew's getting married on Saturday. Yeah. That's, that's, uh, that could be a little, because not only is Mercury squaring Ceres on Saturday, but also Mercury is going to form a semi-sextile with Saturn. Because if you think about Ceres and Saturn right now are really the main attraction this week, um, on Wednesday. So, so right now Mercury is forming aspects with both of them, Ceres and Saturn. Now, semi-sextile is positive. Okay. So it's half of a sextile. So it's not, it's not like as strong as a full square uh, going on, but but we just got to make sure that we kind of, you know, I think this will be a light astrological thing, Kelly. I think that your nephew getting married, like, you know, maybe the minister mispronounces their name or something, you know, I mean, there's just going to be a communication something or other on Saturday. Um, and with this much mercury being active, you know, there could be some hot water. So that's why I always say can't go wrong with listening. Uh, usually, <laughs> usually, um, you know, we can't, we can't get, uh, can't go wrong as much. It's it's over talking that's the problem all right we're getting into the gemini moon and that's coming on sunday that's going to be on march 17th and that is going to be saint patty's day and that's a busy day astrologically speaking so we don't have I don't want to say we have no energy because every single day always has energy. If you ever, ever read my my astrological day-to-day -day posts, and, and again, if you guys can give me some love on Instagram, that would be great. <laughs> but my my day-to-day -day postings, um, you know, there's always something going on. And moon, you know, moon transits, they're very brief, okay, just a couple of hours maybe. But these bigger planetary transits, they can last a long time. Um, and so when we get into... Sunday, that's where the, like a meet a lot of the bulk of the of the weekend is going to be focused. So we have two big events on that day. And, and even though they're big events, they're not really in the scheme of things that I've been talking about. They're not really that huge. But okay, so here we are. Gemini Moon is going to be in the second chance new moon cycle. So if you think about, uh, we were just, we just last Sunday, which was yesterday, we just had the new moon. That will be the second chance new moon on Sunday. The peak of it, the height of it, the pinnacle of it is going to be Saturday night into Sunday. And that's going to be uh, at 12, 11 a.m. Eastern time. So again, Saturday, 9, 11 p.m. on the West Coast. And that's going to be the sun is in Pisces, 27 degrees Pisces. And then the moon is going to be 27 degrees Gemini. So those two are forming a square. They're mutables and they're forming a square with each other, which is a little kind of can be contentious. You know, Pisces is kind of like the dreamer and whatever. And Gemini wants to disseminate the information and talk and talk and talk and talk and talk. So and then we have that Mercury stuff the day before. So we're really going to be talkative. But that's why I said it's better to listen and, and to um, maybe ask questions. Uh, clarifying questions is always a good thing to do okay so so we have that and that those two are kind of going to be sort of at odds with each other but that's what always happens during the second chance new moon or it's some kind of times called this uh, the the uh, uh second quarter lunar cycle um and so that's when they're square with each other it's just we're reevaluating something okay we planted the seeds in theory yesterday but again if you forgot to write out your new moon manifestation list go ahead and write it tonight it, you know we're a little past the 24-hour bubble but we we still have i think there's a lot of um good stuff there so so we could write out our new moon manifestation list there's a lot of good energy still with the moon um the moon is still a super moon so so I think I think it'll be okay if you if you uh <laughs> you know want to go ahead and write that. All right. Now here's the thing that's confusing. Behind the scenes of that second chance new moon. And and if you're just seeing this like let's say you're rewatching it and you know at the end of the week and you you missed all of that, well, uh it's something that you can definitely still write your new moon manifestation list on that day on Sunday. So if you don't write it tonight, 
go ahead and write it on next Sunday uh, or Saturday night. And that will also be the second chance new moon. Um, so you can do that. But behind the scenes, that is, uh, that's what's going on that's more confusing is the sun is going to form its annual conjunction with Neptune. I was just saying the sun is uh, 27 degrees Pisces and Neptune is 27 degrees Pisces. They're both in Pisces. It's like Neptune on the sun. And boy, you talk about being confused. Okay, now we're really in the middle of it. We might be spacey. We might be out of it. We might be extra tired. We might be on that day on Sunday. The peak of it, the height of it, the pinnacle of that on Sunday morning is 7.22 a.m. Eastern Time. So again, 4.22 a.m. if you're on the West Coast on Sunday. That's a day to sleep in. I hope you don't have anything you have to do first thing in the morning. Like if you're thinking, I'm going to start my healthy habit and wake up, you know, early and go jogging or something. Oh, that might be a little hard on that day. <laughs> Luckily, it's a Sunday. We can maybe sleep in. We can maybe, you know, if we're tired, if we're exhausted, if we're, uh, it's a time to rest. And and people might, I get a lot of texting. People go, I don't know what's wrong with me. I'm so out of sorts. I'm lazy. I don't feel like doing anything. I can't get out of my own way. I'm, I'm out of it. That's usually a Neptune thing. Neptune is a little bit like that. Um, and well, you say crappy. I don't know about that because Neptune is all about getting drunk. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, Ashley Ann said, it sounds like a crappy St. Patrick's Day. Yeah, you might be hungover. Yes, for sure. I was thinking that, Kelly, when we were talking about that wedding on Saturday, you might be hungover, you know, because Neptune is drugs, alcohol, anything that takes you out of, you know, microdosing, uh, whatever, whatever thing you're into. Neptune is all about escapism. Neptune is all about <laughs> no null. They can't just text me. <laughs> Please don't do that. Uh, I have people who text me and I ignore them the entire weekend. I'm sorry to say because I have to turn off my phone. I have to have intuitive rest. It's not a 24 hour a day thing, even though my social media kind of seems like it is, but it is definitely not. Um, so yeah, so I am very, I am very disciplined. It's the only way I've been able to do readings like this for 20 years really is to be very disciplined and have a lot of boundaries around it. And I don't seem to be like, you know, I don't want to be, uh, sound mean or anything, but it's, it's, it's been a thing that, um, that I have, you know, I have to, I have to have intuitive rest. I'm not a machine. I can't just crank it out and crank it out, crank it out. So it is a thing that I, uh, that I, that I, I like to do, but I do get people to text me during the week and, you know, I don't know. I mean, what, I, I, I can't answer questions that way. The only time I ever answer free questions is on this program, just to let you know. Otherwise, you book a session and that's how you get information. Yeah. So getting back to Sun conjunct Neptune, it is it is the lies, illusions, confusion. Like I said, it's drugs and alcohol. It's escapism. It's wanting to be in la la land and dreamland and and have, you know, all kinds of, you know, have her head in the clouds and feel like the fairy tale. But it's also uh, very cloudy and foggy and fuzzy. And it's a great day to read a book, to lay lay in bed and take a nap, to, you know, meditate, to pray, to get in touch with your spiritual practices to really um, embrace that that loving, you know, side of yourself. All that good stuff is that Neptune stuff, but we will for sure be kind of fuzzy and out of it. Um, that is a collective thing that most likely will happen, especially if you have anything 27 degrees in your chart astrologically, woo, you're gonna be feeling this. It doesn't even have to just be Pisces. It could be anything. Now, again, if you're Virgo, this is gonna be opposing you. Um, uh, especially if you're born at the very, very, very end of Virgo, uh, this will definitely be opposing your astrological. So if you're born, um, let's see around like the 17th of, uh, September, uh, or around that time, uh, bubble wise, you're, you, you know, you will definitely feel this, this will be right up opposing your sun. So, so you might be a little even extra out of it. So, so that's time to take a break. And, and, you know, I always talk about this during Mercury retrograde, usually like where we want to go, 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 go. And we want to like be in the left lane going 90 miles an hour at all times. Well, this, you know, we get some, some of these transits we get, it's like, whoo, we got to 
sit back. We got to lay, we're going to relax a little bit. We got to take a break. We got to take a breather. We got to just pray, meditate, zone out. Okay. Um, now obviously getting drunk and high and all those things, use caution with that because Neptune can be, um, you know, sometimes even overdosing on medications or having sensitivities or different things. So we want to make sure that we are extra a little cautious around that. Um, also Neptune is fluid in the body. Uh, so lymph nodes, okay, drainage, fluid and drainage, and also it's the feet, okay? So Sarah, you might have an achy foot day. Uh, Sarah broke her foot if everybody wants to send her prayer still, even though her bone is healing. It takes a little time for those bones to heal, I'll tell you that. I know that for a fact. Um, so, oh boy, Wendy, you have your moon at 27 degrees Virgo. Okay, so yeah, so that'll be opposing this sun sun neptune so for sure just know i always say if you're planning ahead that's why i like to do these broadcasts that's how this whole thing started i started doing this back in 2009 where i was i was sending people um like just like a typed paragraph email uh of like oh fyi the full moon's coming and then i started doing more and more and more and more and more Okay, where I started like doing a whole blog and then I started doing these daily tidbits and then whatever. So since 2009 to 2024, I've been doing some form of like disseminating of this information. And I really do feel that it helps people. Um, and so that, so like, okay, next weekend comes, you can go, oh yeah, Gretchen said, there's a, I feel a little funky today, or I feel really exhausted. What the heck is wrong with me? Oh, I, I, you know, I have this big thing I have to do and now I don't feel like doing it. There's all that kind of stuff that we, that, that can happen when we, when we have this, um, uh, type of energy. So yes, so Sunday is the day. So we have the second quarter lunar cycle overnight between Saturday and Sunday. And that's the time we have to reevaluate. Getting back to that, you know, again, that's when the farmer, okay, uh, it, you know, uh, plants the new seeds is the new moon. And then the farmer has to reevaluate by the time we get to the second quarter lunar cycle, we have to reevaluate. The, do the plants have enough water? Do they have enough fertilizer? Whatever. And so that's something that we have to do uh, to reevaluate, okay, um, uh, the situation of what's going on. And so that's all it is. We're just reevaluating. So overnight between Saturday and Sunday, we have this reevaluation. But the problem is, is that we also have Neptune and the sun having that conjunction. And it's almost like on one hand, we're going to have an increase in intuition, but on the other hand, it's almost like we can't sort of mm, trust ourselves fully because there's some confusion going on here. So it's almost like we have to kind of follow follow our intuitive guidance, but also wait until there's more clarity. By the way, that's a terrible time to sign contracts, to make to have big business deals or negotiations. And, and that includes Monday too, because it'll still be active all weekend into Monday, Tuesday, even next week. So if you have to buy a new car, if you have to do sign contracts, if you have to do some big legal thing, that is like put it on hold or do it before or do it after, okay, uh, that it's over. Oh, thank you so much. Yay, Sarah. 200 stars. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Oh, you got two, you got two rings there. <laughs> Thank you. Um, oh no, Ashley Ann. Yeah, you you have some ankle and foot inflammation. Oh no. Yep. Yeah. You, so you want to be careful with that. You want to like maybe Google lymph node help or see a doctor, of course, or you know, cut back salt. All those things are going to help with some of that. Oh, Kristen, thank you so much for sending Reiki to Sarah. She's a Reiki um, practitioner. She's amazing. We love Kristen. Um, <laughs> um, let's see here. Uh, Sarah said, thank you so much for the good thoughts, everybody. Wendy, you just told your mom you could take a nap all day on Sunday. Perfect. She'll love you for that. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yes. Trust, trust your gut. Okay. Good to know you. Oh, you signed your book contract. Congratulations. Yay, Ashley Ann. <laughs> that's amazing. So that's this week in astrology. Um, like I said, it's a little, uh, shorter of a week. Um, uh, as far as the, the bulk of the astrological thing, I just want to say one thing very extremely quickly. Uh, Chiron, um, if you remember last Tuesday or two, two days, two Tuesdays ago on March 5th, 
uh, Chiron and the North Node form them at conjunction. Well, it is still active all the way until this Thursday, and now it's really starting to wane and come down. And if you think about it, Chiron is what we need to heal. The North Node of the Moon is our destiny. That's still in the background. I talked about it in the beginning of the, prog uh, the program, um, but uh, as we get closer to Thursday, that's when it actually really starts to like completely starts to dissipate. So just so you know, it's active still until this Thursday where we're healing something and then we're going to be aligning with the North of the Moon, which is our destiny, what we're meant to do here in this life. Okay, everybody. So I am ready for some questions. If anybody has some uh, questions for me tonight on the broadcast. Yay, Kelly. You want to know a card for for what is going to happen for a long weekend for your ne nephew's wedding what do you need to know kelly oh that's so that's so appropriate too right romantic feelings romantic feelings okay your feelings are real and worth exploring these are romantic feelings i think it's just you know love Love and love and love. Remember, Venus is in Pisces. That's a that's a good thing for love, you know? So I think it's going to be lovely, Kelly. I think it's going to be a good, uh, fun time and a good good thing. Rosalie wants to know, anybody uh, wants to know if, if, you, if I see you moving? I do get a hit um, on something that's more down south, and I am seeing palm trees, which could be like, South Carolina. I don't know if North Carolina is a thing, but like that's Georgia, that's Florida. I'm seeing palm trees of like South U U Southeast U.S. Okay, uh, not like Bahamas. I'm sorry, um, but like in the United States. Um, I keep seeing that. Yeah, I'm getting I'm getting cards. You're really like in this stage right now of like, I'm not sure what to do or what to do. It's kind of like there's a lot of um, feelings of confusion around it. And maybe like, I can't move because of this and this. Like I'm hearing all of this like stuff circulating around that question. Um, but eventually it says that you will figure it out and you will move. And you might even get more for your house or like if you end up selling than what you think. Okay. And it almost feels like if you do this, it's like a big almost sell off of like a lot of things, not just the house, maybe even a car, maybe even possessions. Like there's, it's like almost like you're clearing your life uh, for, for something new and fun. But I do see that you could um, end up moving for sure. You got the move card literally out of my deck. You got the move card. It's just that there's a, um, a lot of logistic things that have to be figured out. <laughs> Wendy. Wendy, I think you need a new car, honey. I'm sorry to say that. You said, can I have a car a card for your car? <laughs> I hear it's called a name, though. There's some name that it's called. You're temporarily breathing life into it, okay, Wendy? But it, in the, I just feel like you're going to need a new car. Um, because this is an ending and a new beginning. You know, you get the world card as an ending and a new beginning. So it's like, it's like almost like we're, it's almost dead and then it comes back to life. <laughs> um, but I feel all ultimately that you need a new vehicle. Okay. And I'm getting warm weather. So that might even be, um, by the summer. Uh, so yeah, just so that, you know, I'm sorry to say, don't dump too much into that car monetarily because it feels like you might end up needing a, a whole new one eventually anyway. Um, uh, Sorry to say that. Emily, flying to New Jersey on Thursday. Driving your car back to Florida on Saturday. Well, it might be expensive, <laughs> Emily. This this one flew out. I didn't pick it. Um, it flew out. Spiritual material conflict. Uh, what to do, what to do as far as money. And like, you want to do this, but then you have to do this. There's like a little bit of like, ah, I'm not sure. You have to put out some money. Is it, It's almost like a question of like, is this worth it? And, you know, what should I do? How should I spend the money? Um, I'm going to pull, I'm going to actually pull a card now for you. Oh. I guess not. The, the universe has a lot to say about this, um, but it feels solid. It feels grounded. I don't know why, but I feel like you're going to see somebody, not like you're staying necessarily 
the whole time in a hotel, but like you're, it's like you're there to visit somebody that you know really well or something. Um, uh, could be a family member or something like that. It's like, in other words, you know, how some vacations is like a cruise or like a resort or some kind of thing. It doesn't feel like that. It feels like you're purposely going to visit or see somebody. I don't know, but it looks, it looks good. It's just a monetary question. There's some glitch here with the money. I hope that helps. Yay. Yes, Wendy said it is a temporary fix. Oh, okay. Well, as long as you know that. Yes, money comes easily to you. I love that. I love that. Yes, when, uh, Emily needs to remember that too for her trip. Money comes easily. You know what one I love uh, really that's like one of my favorite manifestations, Emily, um, and also and also whoever else may need it, is if you have to lay out some money. Okay, so like Wendy said, she laid out $2,500 for her car manifest 5,000. It comes back to me doubled. It comes back to me doubled. So if you have to have a little outlay of money, it comes back to you doubled. Okay. That's all. That's what a fun one that I like to play with. <laughs> no, that's not where I'm seeing. Let's see how your daughter moved to Florida. Oh, 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 oh no. I just realized I'm not plugged in. <laughs> um, oh, well. Uh, I might have to wrap up this broadcast kind of quickly. I apologize um, because my, my camera is about to die here. Um, I'm so sorry, everybody. I wanted to answer a couple of other questions, but it looks like uh, looks like my, my uh, video is going to die here. So I appreciate everybody for tuning in, for watching my videos. If you could please tune into my Facebook page and also my YouTube page and my Instagram page, um, I would love uh, for you guys to... Um, be able to follow and also catch me every Monday night, 8 p.m. And if you want to have a personalized astrological session, please feel free to reach out. Love to everybody. Namaste and have a good night. Bye.